I was directing the Pat Collins show. The guest that morning was uh, a performer named Mike Douglas. Now, there were years when I would say Mike Douglas, and people say, oh, I love that show. Now, most people say, Mike, Mike, you mean Michael Douglas, the actor? I didn't know he had a talk show. I said, no, 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 no. it was a different, a, uh, Mike Douglas. Of course, now, a lot of people don't even know who Michael Douglas is. He's sort of semi-retired, too. But Mike Douglas was sort of the Ellen of his time. He had a di daytime syndicated talk show that was uh, very, very successful, and it was, um, uh, it was a, a lovely 90-minute show of performance and interview and celebrity gossip, and it was, um, it was the Ellen of its, of its time. Well, Mike, as a guest on that show, uh, had come from, f the show was done in Philadelphia, had come, come to New York uh, with his executive producer, a guy named Jack Riley, and Jack watched from the control room. And after the show came up to me, he said, uh, Don, um, the director we have in Philadelphia has got some medical issues, and just in case, would you ever be able to, to come to Philadelphia and, and fill in for him? I said, Whew, Mike Douglas show, absolutely, I would, I, I would love that. And You'd watch the show? Oh, oh, definitely, definitely, uh, especially when I was home sick from school, and, <laughs> and, and, and it was, um, it had, it's, competition was uh, Merv Griffin, and Dinah Shore had a show at the same time, but they were big, and that was in the days of, of three commercial t channels, so it was seen and known everywhere, and I, I knew it well. well. Two weeks after that conversation, Jack Riley called me up and said, our director uh, just went into the hospital. Uh, is there any chance you can come down and do two weeks of shows? And it just so happened I could, uh, vacation time or something. We were down for some reason. I said, okay, I'll, I can be in Philadelphia tomorrow. He said, no, no, uh, this is the two weeks we're doing the show live on the beach in Miami. I said, okay, I'll fly to Miami. Not knowing how far over my head I was, not knowing how intensely complicated that is, not knowing that it was a giant outdoor live remote with multiple cameras and big setups and and and, 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 and circus acts and, and people uh, that were staged in the sand and, and a giant audience in, in bleachers. So I flew to Miami and did those shows. I sort of, once again, learned what I had to know 30 seconds before I had to know it. I faked my way through, and at the end of the, the, end of the two weeks, they said, uh, just in case uh, our director doesn't make it, would you be interested in doing this full time? And I said, okay. <laughs> and I did, and he, he, he didn't come back. Uh, and uh, two weeks later, I was packing up and moving to Philadelphia and directing this gigantic, big-time variety show. Yeah. Talk about working with Mike. Um, what was your interaction with him, and what was his input on the look of the show? Mike was the sweetest, most charming guy you can imagine. And, and I, he didn't have a, he didn't have a competitive sense. He didn't have a, 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 a star's attitude. He just was a, a sweet guy with a pretty voice who had stumbled into the to the right thing at the right time, uh, which made it m so much easier for all of us. Uh, and quite frankly, I think that's what partly what what made him good. Uh, he uh, it, being a, being the host of a talk show is a tough dichotomy because on the one hand, it, you know that the show exists because of you. Your name, it's the Mike Douglas show. Your name is uh, on that marquee and people watch because of you. Uh, but to be good at it, you've got to give up the spotlight. You've got to make the, your guest feel comfortable and important and you've got to make him funny and enjoy his performance. Well, Mike, a, 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 as a singer, uh, s loved it when somebody knocked it out of the park as a, as a performer 
on the show. He loved the, the finest singers in the world to be on, on, on his show. A, a comedian, he, he, Mike was occasionally a clever, witty guy, but he loved it when a comedian would, would make fun of him. Or, uh, and and that's, a, that's a rare balance. And there have been a lot of bright, sharp um, talk show hosts who don't ha didn't have that kind of uh, ability to give up the spotlight. And, but M Mike did, and, and, and that made it easy for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Certainly made it easier for me. And, uh, and I, I, I loved that time. Mike also had a, a part of the show was called a, uh, a guest host so that, that one of the celebrities would be on every show for an, the entire week. So we got to work with some, some, uh, some remarkable people for, for the entire week of shows. I got to spend a week with Red Skelton and, mm. and Jackie Gleason and, and Jerry Lewis and uh, all, some of the finest singers and, and crooners and Catskill comedians that you can imagine. And I, in retrospect, think, man, I wish I had been a little more mature to know how special this was. Uh, but it, I, I still feel blessed that I got a chance to, to, to spend those three years uh, with Mike.